Hello, so today's video is based on a question that I got. It's, it's a quiz part statement, part question that I got on Instagram. So essentially it reads as fundamentals are so confusing. So what is the best way to understand fundamentals? So I decided that I'd just answer that. I'd actually do a video on the best way to understand fundamentals, but not only the best way, also the quickest and the easiest way for you to be able to understand fundamentals, right? So without any further ado, let's get on to the video. So to start things off, we're gonna do the basics first, right? So we're gonna look at supply. Uh, let's use capital letters. Uh, supply, and we're also gonna look at demand, right? Then we're also gonna look at demand. So these two are like a scale. Uh, for me, these two I consider to be the basics uh, in terms of you understanding fundamentals. So if we look at demand, demand is essentially um, how much consumers need of something, right? So the need for something, that is the demand, the need for something. So in this case, when, when demand exceeds or is greater than supply, when demand exceeds supply, so prices go lower, right? Sorry, go higher. So prices go higher. Or prices, let's use the, another word, let's say prices increase. Yeah, let's use a, a, a more suitable word. So prices increase. And then on the other side, supply, it is it is how much is being produced, right? Uh, if, 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 if we're talking about a business, how much is being produced of a certain item, that is the supply of something, right? How much is being produced to the marketplace that the marketplace needs, which is the demand, right? So when supply exceeds demand, so when supply, uh, so when supply exceeds demand, exceeds demand, prices decrease, right? And I'm purposefully doing it this way, right? I'm, I, I purposefully decided that I'll do it this way. I'm not not going to give you guys a diagram that I've already mapped out. I'll teach you everything step by step so you are able to follow with me, right? So this is essentially the basics of it. We need to understand supply. We need to understand demand. So whenever the supply exceeds demand or the supply is greater than the demand, then prices decrease. Whenever the demand is greater than the supply, prices increase. So uh, just as an example, if we have a community of 50 people, and let's say 50, uh, 40, 40 of the 50 is actually selling bread. Yeah, we'll just use bread as, a, as an example. Remember, this is not a, 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 a video on economics, it's a video on trading. So <laughs> bear with me here. So 50, 50 uh, a, a, popul a population of 50 people, 40 are selling bread, and which means that only 10 of the 50 actually wanna buy bread, right? So that means that the supply is very high because 40 people are selling bread, but only 10 are available to buy bread. So the demand is only 10 while the, while the supply is 40. So that means that they now need to compete on price. So they need to lower their prices so that either of these, either maybe one or all of these 10 people can buy from one person. So they need to compete with price. So that is essentially how you need to understand supply. And then demand on the other side, using the very same population, if we have 50 people, uh, and those 50 people, uh, let's say maybe 10 in this case, are actually selling bread and only now 40. So the, the, the supply is now 10, but the demand is 40. 40 people want to buy bread, but only 10 people are supplying bread, right? So in that case, they can raise their prices because the supply, the demand exceeds the supply, right? So that is just a basic example that I, that, that I just thought of right now. So that is the first step that we need to understand, the basics of supply and demand, right? So let us just uh, circle this out. So we need to understand the basics of supply and demand. Um, okay, let's do it like this. Let's send this to the back. Okay, yeah, so this is the basics of it, right? We're understanding, yeah, it's a medium. We're understanding the basics of supply and demand. Now, let's move on to something else. So now, let's go to what we call the Phillips curve, right? So now since we have an understanding of supply and demand, let us go to the Phillips curve. So now the Phillips curve, on the other hand, is essentially showing us or it's an indication of where the economy is, right? So because 
the economy can be in three different stages right and i'll explain those stages shortly for you guys so that you can be understand so that you can understand them based on the phillips curve right so when it comes to uh okay i wanted to write this here so the phillips curve phillips curve right and okay we'll make that bolder in a minute but this is what we need to we know about the phillips the phillips curve so essentially it's a graph and like i said it tells us uh where the economy is not essentially it gives us an idea of where the economy is or where the economy could potentially be right like i said there's three different stages right so right up here we have inflation it will all make sense shortly uh, we have inflation and then down here we have unemployment right we have unemployment so and then in the center here we have this line that's going down like this so this is the Phillips curve so what it's telling us is that the economy can be in three different or three different things can potentially be happening in the, or one of the three can potentially be happening in in the economy right and that is one of that is what i'm going to explain to you right now so the first thing is that okay let's do this here like i said guys I'm, i want to walk you guys through all of this so that you have an understanding of everything right uh, from from start to end essentially i want you guys to have an understanding of it so let's do this let's duplicate this one let's duplicate it again okay let's change the colors here okay let's change this color let's make it this color right so three things could one of the three things could be happening in an economy at any given point or any given time right so we have this line right here so as you can see okay let's change the color as well let's make it yellow so as you can see here we have inflation we also have unemployment right and this is I'd say the ideal situation or the state of the economy, the ideal state of the economy. What is this ideal state of the economy where we essentially have moderate inflation and we also have moderate unemployment. Unemployment is not too low, it's not too high. So we can look at this at this sort of scenario when especially when it comes to inflation, like the central bank's targets, like two percent or like here in South Africa, three to six percent target range, which essentially is four point five percent. That is what the, the midpoint is. So that is this is the ideal scenario here. This the midline here where we have moderate inflation. There is inflation, but it's moderate. It's not high. It's not too low. And then we also have unemployment, not too high, not too low. So this here, it's what we call full employment, right? So this here is what we call full employment. That is the ideal economic state or scenario, right? And then. When it comes to full employment, remember we can never really have zero unemployment, right? By full employ by full employment, it essentially means that employment is anywhere in the ranges of three to six percent, right? So that is what is generally considered as full employment. Could be right, I could be wrong. No, that's generally what is what is what is uh, a, a being interpreted as full em full employment, a range of three to six percent, right? So let's change color here. Let's make it white. So this is this ideal scenario right here. So let's also make it white. This is the ideal scenario right here of the Phillips curve, right? So where the economy is experiencing moderate inflation, but also unemployment that is moderate. So full employment essentially, and inflation around the 2% target, if that is the central bank's 2% target. Now, this is one of the three, sta the three states that an economy can be in, right? So if we shift towards the left, sorry, towards the right, further towards the right, what we can see now is that on the scale of unemployment, we've pushed higher, which means unemployment is higher, but on the scale of inflation, we've actually pushed lower, right? So this is where we are. So in this, in this, in this state, this is called the recessionary gap. So this is called the recessionary gap. So in the recessionary gap, we have 
high so we, sorry we have low and low uh, inflation I almost said CPI and then we have high unemployment we have high, high unemployment so in this stage this is called the recessionary gap right so in the recessionary gap we are having high unemployment but also but we also having low inflation so this is this is the second state in which an economy can be in so the first one is where we have the ideal scenario where we have full full employment inflation is moderate around the, the the target and then unemployment is also moderate as well then if we shift towards the right this is where we have a recessionary gap right where ideally this is a, a recessionary scenario where we have very low inflation but unemployment is going higher but then if we move from the ideal state and we start shifting towards the left right here this is where okay let me do this so right here where we are right now as you can see on the scale of inflation we've moved higher we are higher up on the scale of inflation but on the scale of unemployment we've moved lower so this one here it is called the inflationary gap so inflationary inflationary gap so essentially in the inflationary gap we have high inflation high inflation and we have uh, okay let's go back up uh, we have high inflation and then we also have low unemployment so these are the three states that an economy can be in. It can either be in a inflationary gap, ideal scenario or full employment or in a recessionary gap. So these are very important uh, states of the economy for you to understand, right? Because if you have an understanding of these, then it makes it makes your life easier. Whenever you're reading a news article and they're saying unemployment is decreasing or unemployment is going up, then you know that, okay, if unemployment is going up which means that we are probably moving from a state of ideal or the ideal state that is where we're moving from okay let's make this a bit bigger so that it can show that this is the topic okay okay so Phillips curve right so we have three like I, I was still explaining sorry we have three scenarios right we have a inflationary gap moderate or ideal scenario and then we have a recessionary gap right so now this this helps you to have an understanding of the relationship between inflation and, and unemployment right so whenever inflation is high whenever you read and they say a specific economy is, is experiencing high inflation then you know that generally the chances are if inflation is high we are in an inflationary gap then unemployment is generally low for most right that is the ideal that is the based on the Phillips curve right and in a, in a case where we're experiencing low sorry where we're experiencing low inflation but unemployment is high that is generally when we are in a recession or headed towards a recession that is when we call it the recessionary gap so now it's gonna be and now what 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 you also need to understand is that inflationary gap and recessionary gap they like the opposites of the same coin right so inflationary gap high inflation low unemployment recessionary gap low inflation high unemployment so it's in essentially the opposite of each other so if we have an understanding of inflation and how it affects the economy then we should have an understanding of the of how a recession should in impact an economy because it's just the opposite of what of how inflation impacts the economy right so this is the second step or the second stage that i wanted to explain to you guys so that you can understand the relationship between inflation and unemployment and remember there's no such thing as zero unemployment right full employment anywhere in the range of three to six percent generally right so i hope you understand this and i hope it makes sense because now we are about to move on to inflation since now we understand supply and demand so we have an understanding of supply and demand we also have an understanding of the phillips curve where we know the relationship between inflation and unemployment we also know the relationship uh we also know the relationship uh between uh or how 
that the, the economy can be in either an inflationary gap, a recessionary gap, or full employment, right? So that is also the first key things for us to understand. And now let us move on to the next thing. So now let us understand inflation because if we understand inflation, then it will be easier for us to actually understand a recession, right? So if we have an understanding of inflation, then it will be easier for us to understand a recession because we know that in an inflationary gap, inflation is high, but unemployment is what? Unemployment is low. So in this case, let us now focus on, okay, firstly, before we do this, let us also uh, delineate this. So that our 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 diagram makes more sense and is more presentable. So let us send to the back. Of course, let us uh, make it clear. The border. Let's change color to gray. Yeah. Let us see how it looks. Okay, looks good. So now let us focus on inflation, right? So. When it comes to inflation, inflation, we need to now understand what really produces inflation. What is the driving force behind inflation? So when it comes to inflation, uh, so when it comes to inflation, there's two types of inflation, right? This is the first type. Sorry about that. And then also have the second type, right? So the first type of inflation that we're going to focus on, it's what we call cost push inflation, right? So this is cost push inflation. And essentially inflation is when prices go up, right? When prices go up, uh, that, is what is, that is what inflation is. You can even say inflation is the cost of living, right? So it's up to you. But essentially the key thing to understand is that when prices go up, that is due to what to inflation so you also need to if we if you recall what we started with supply and demand i said when do when do prices increase when demand exceeds supply so if you also now should also be putting one and two together and having that understanding so we said it's cost push inflation right okay let me not write inflation we know that we know that we're talking about inflation so essentially let's make this medium let's change it to white yeah so we having so we have cost push and then we also have demand pull inflation so now you know you see where where the where demand is coming in right so remember what i said when when demand exceeds supply prices go up and inflation i said inflation is when prices increase or when the cost of living goes up now it clicks so when it comes to cost push essentially cost push inflation it is it is it is inflation that is as a result of uh, two things right so it can be as a result of the cost of uh, raw materials going up so in this case we can say okay yeah let's 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 say let's let yeah let's also separate cost push is into two into two right so I said the first one raw materials going higher right or the price price of raw materials materials going higher right so what do i mean by this so when when i say that the price of raw materials going higher it means the production costs so if for example you're a business and let's say you 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 in the steel industry right so and then the prices of let's say iron ore because it's one of the ingredients of of, of manufacturing steel if the price of iron ore starts going up then it's going to affect you as the person who manufactures steel because now you are buying iron ore at a higher price so which means that you also now need to do up you, you also now need to mark up your selling price of your steel that you make because you also because when the prices of iron ore go up they squeezing your profit margins and if they squeezing your profit margins it means that you are now getting less so for you to increase your profit margins or accommodate them 
because of the high prices of iron ore you also need to raise your prices so essentially you are feeding your prices from so when it comes to production costs the, the costs are actually passed on to the consumer so that is how it goes from the producer it goes to the business and from the business the business pushes it pushes the, the prices to who to the consumer right so that is essentially how it goes that is what that is what i mean by the price of raw materials in terms of uh, going higher so for example if we if we're talking about oil if oil prices start going higher then what what will that do that will that will increase the price of what the price of petrol if the prices of petrol of petrol goes higher they will increase the price of what of transportation right so that is just how it rolls that is how so that that in that type of inflation that the 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 cost of the raw materials is pushing what is pushing producers to increase prices that is why it's called cost push right so it's pushing producers to increase prices so in this case uh we'd say ie right you'd say ie let's say oil uh let's say steel right so that you have an understanding so it, it could it can essentially be anything right but as long as it's the raw material that the producers that is now expensive that now the business or the sellers now selling it at a higher price so that they can free up their profit margins that are now being squeezed by the higher price of the raw material so that is the first one when it comes to the cost the cost push side the cost push side of things and then secondly we have wage push right so in this case it's just wages right we all understand wages so wage push so in this case businesses increase wages so let's say maybe the minimum wage the minimum minimum wage minimum wage is increased so if a if a country or the government comes out and they say okay we're increasing the minimum wage so what does that mean that means that businesses also need to increase their wages to meet the minimum wage if let's say uh, let's, if let's say the, the the wages were actually below right the minimum wage and then how does that also push the the producer or the businesses to hike their prices because remember that's why it said cost push because now when wages go up remember for the business to increase their wages let's say this was the profit margin right and then now wages were here and then now wages need to go up as you can see this is the profit that we're making so if wages go up they are squeezing this gap right the profit margin so now businesses need to increase their prices so that they can do what they can free up the profit margins and that is essentially how we get cost push inflation right because now the increase of wages is pushing businesses to do what to increase their prices so that they can of course uh increase their profit margins right or mo maintain their profit margins rather not that they just greedily increasing their profit margins but to maintain profit margins essentially so that is essentially what the t those are the two types of cost push inflation right raw materials as well as wage push then if we go on to the demand side this this on the on this side of the scale it's called demand pull inflation right so what does that mean this in this in this case it is the rise uh, so so let me write it let me yeah let me just do it right here like i said guys i'm doing this with you and i hope it, it you for you able to follow if i do it this way rather than me just showing you a diagram and explaining everything on the diagram but in this case i'm doing everything step by step like i said it's the easiest and the quickest and also the best way to understand fundamentals so i, I hope you're paying attention right i really hope you are and like i said on the demand side it is the demand of goods and services right uh, of goods and services so in this case uh, when when the, when when the when there's an increase let us be specific increase in the so when there's an increase So when there's an increase in the demand of goods and services, the demand of goods and services, then that is when we have what? Then we have that is when we have inflation as well. So what does that what what does this create? So when there's an increase, so when there's an increase in the demand of goods and services, like I said, this pulls 
prices, right? Remember what we had said with, uh, let me try and fit everything in the page. Yeah, it fits. So remember what we had said with cost push, right? Cost push prices, the, the, the rise of prices pushes businesses to do what? To increase their prices, right? Or it pushes the producers to increase their prices, whatever it may be. If it's because of raw materials, it's going to push the producer to increase their price. And since producers increase their prices or they've been pushed to increase their prices, they'll push businesses to increase their prices because they want to free up or maintain their profit margins. And then those uh, those higher costs will, will do what? Will be passed down to consumers, right? So that is essentially how it works. And then on the demand pull side, it's when there is an increase in the demand of goods and services. Now, there we have that, that this word again that we started with, demand. Remember I said when whenever demand exceeds supply, prices go higher. So in this case, there's an increase in the demand of goods and services. So this pulls prices higher. But then now the question would be, what, what causes the demand or an increase in the demand of goods and services? So we can look at this. So in this case, we'll, we'll, yeah, let me just explain it here before we go back to the Phillips curve diagram. So in this case, when it, what really increases the demand of goods and services, we'll look at it in two ways, right? So firstly, we're going to start with, okay, let's minimize this a bit so that we don't lose everything because I still want to have the whole inflation picture. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think everyone can still see, everyone can still read. So yeah, this is what we have here. So what really causes demand push, demand pull, inflation? So it is businesses. So it is businesses, uh, businesses. And then we also have the biggest one. It is consumers. Actually consumers are uh, actually the biggest component of GDP. Well, consumer spending or consumer consumption, it's the biggest component of GDP, right? Because if, uh, if, if, if uh, consumer spending drops, then businesses can even literally close down, you know? So it's a very important part. Uh, but essentially, uh, like I said, when it comes to demand pull, it can be due to consumers. So how do consumers contribute to increase in inflation or increase in the demand of goods and services? So. Okay, let us start with businesses before we get to consumers. I think it, it would be a better sequence if we start with businesses. Okay, so when it comes to businesses, so let's say in the demand pool side of things, businesses are growing, right? So businesses growing. So businesses are growing and expanding, right? And expanding so since businesses are growing and expanding which means that increase hiring increase hiring or job opportunities uh, job <laughs> job opportunities increase hiring or job opportunities and if there's increased hiring and job opportunities it means uh, it means that they now doing what they taking loans taking loans this this is businesses right i'm still talking about businesses so now businesses are taking loans to grow and expand right to grow uh to buy machinery to buy machinery right so this all of these things actually feed into the demand side of inflation how essentially because it creates job opportunities it means more people are getting employed right so now if more people are getting employed, then it means now we can go to the consumer side and try and understand things. So now on the consumer side, since more people are employed, more people are employed, uh, since more people are employed, comma, more people, more people earn earn wages right so more people earn wages and now since more people earn wages more people afford goods and services 
more people afford goods and services now since more people afford goods and services that means that the demand of goods and services will go higher right uh, will go higher then so if the demand of goods and services go higher then uh, prices so then businesses uh, businesses will raise their prices right so businesses will raise their prices so on the consumer side more people because businesses are growing and expanding they borrowing money they buy more machinery and they hiring more people that results in more consumers being employed so more people earn wages more people afford good basic goods and services uh, they, therefore the demand of goods and services will go higher and therefore businesses will raise their prices right why are they raising their prices because now there is more money uh, there is more money more money chasing uh, more money chasing few supply or few uh, yeah let's say limited supply right to try and make this make sense uh, so there's more money now chasing the limited supply of goods and services so that is why prices go higher right and then of course also because more people so consumer spending goes higher consumer spending goes higher right so this is the very biggest thing, right? Because for businesses to keep on running, they need to make a profit, right? And how will businesses make a profit? If people have money to spend, if people have money to buy the goods and services that they provide, right? So this is how inflation is produced from the demand pull side, right? So, excuse me, I hope this makes sense, right? I hope this makes sense. And with me actually running everything and doing everything with you in front of you i hope it clicks but now the most important thing or how to connect the dots now when it comes to demand pull inflation remember i said on the demand side it essentially because businesses are growing and they're employing more people which means unemployment is going down okay let's yeah let's actually add that here as well unemployment Did I write that correctly? Unemployment is going down. Yeah. So unemployment is going down, right? So now that I've mentioned this this name, unemployment is going down. Now let us go back to something that we've done that we've already done, right? Remember the Phillips curve? I said that on the Phillips curve, when the scales shift to the left, we're now on the scale of unemployment, unemployment is going down. What happens to inflation? Inflation goes up. So now we understand why when when businesses so now we understand why when businesses are doing well they're growing and then they're hiring more people, unemployment is going low. Like we explained in the Phillips curve. It's, a, it's creating a, an inflationary gap where there's high inflation but low unemployment. So whenever unemployment is decreasing, remember, inflation generally follows. Whenever unemployment is increasing, remember, inflation generally decreases, right? So this is how you now put one and two together or you now connect the dots with the Phillips curve and what I've just explained when it comes to inflation, right? So this is the bread and butter. Of, tra of, 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 of trading with fundamentals. If you understand this, like specifically this video that I've just explained to you, then everything else moving forward will be easier, right? Because you now understand inflation, you, you understand the relationship of supply and demand, you understand the relationship of inflation and unemployment based on the Phillips curve. And then now you understand what really produces inflation, right? We have the cost push side, which generally where it's essentially you can say cost push is commodities, on the on the prices of raw of raw materials going higher that's commodities and remember when prices go higher those prices are passed on to consumers so that is why 
inflation or prices increase and then on the wage side whenever minimum wages are increased therefore businesses also need to increase their their, their wages and then since now it's eating in their profit margins they free up they need to maintain profit margins or maybe increase profit margins so they increase their prices right and that is how we get inflation then on the demand side businesses are doing well businesses are expanding hiring getting more people more people are being employed therefore unemployment is going lower so now it means that on the consumer side more people are employed more people can spend money more people can take out loans right because now more people are are affording to take out loans right so that all of those things feed into what into the demand of goods and services and that is why we have the demand pull side of inflation so now we understand what really causes inflation and then the relationship that we saw on the Phillips curve and then now how it ties back to supply and demand so whenever inflation is going higher you know that it could be either cost push or it could be demand pull right on the cost push on the cost push side of inflation generally on the side of raw materials maybe supplies supply side interventions can be implemented but there's not really much that can be done unless those prices go lower right or unless the supply of those raw materials starts increasing then it would drive the price of those raw materials lower but if the supply of those raw materials is scarce or decreasing then that will drive the prices higher of those raw materials so that is the intervention that can be done when it comes to cost push and cost push side based on raw materials when it comes to cost push inflation based on wages obviously when inflation is going lower then businesses and then unemployment is going higher or on the recessionary when we headed onto onto the recessionary gap side of things based on the phillips curve like i explained then in this case then businesses can start lowering their wages right they can start decreasing their wages because more people they are laying off more people they are they are they are firing more people because we are, we are headed in a recessionary gap phase of the phillips curve right so this is how we then tie everything together and then when it comes to the demand pull side of inflation how do we now do what how do we now stop inflation right so when it comes to stopping inflation before we get to stopping inflation uh, let us see so we've done supply and demand Phillips curve then inflation right so I think we should also okay let's uh, we had zoomed to 80 I think yeah so I think let me see how long I've been going in this video. Okay, it's only 37 minutes. Okay, not bad. So, so now we have an understanding of what produces inflation, the two types of inflation, right? So now we need to know, okay, inflation is high. The economies or the central banks can now see that inflation in high is high in the specific economy, right? How do they kill inflation, right? Of course, to kill inflation, you need to do the opposite of what produced it. If it's, like I said, on the cost push side there's not really much they can do with the supply side of raw materials unless the supply increases then prices will go lower not really much they can do there wages obviously when things start going south for the businesses then they could they could start decreasing their pay right because more people are getting uh, unemployed or unemployment is increasing so that means that also businesses will start laying off more people therefore freeing up more profit margins and they can lower their wages essentially then on the demand side when it comes to the demand side we need to do what we need to reduce the demand of goods and services which means that we need to minimize what or, or the most important thing here like i said more money is chasing uh what did i say here casing okay guys um, I, uh, my ocd is kicking and let me let me correct this <laughs> so more money uh more money is chasing so more money more money chasing limited supply so in this case that is what produces demand pull so more money so we need to cut the money there's more money that is chasing the limited supply if we cut that more money that means that that supply that is limited will no longer be limited so it will be in excess right and that should drive prices lower that should drive inflation lower but then how do we lower inflation right so for this How do we lower inflation? So when it comes to lowering inflation, obviously there's two ways, right? There's monetary policy, there's fiscal policy. There's the central bank, and then there is the government. So let us uh, send to back. Okay, yeah, looks good. 
So how do we then kill inflation? So now let us go to killing inflation. Or how do we lower inflation, right? Remember, we can't control inflation directly because we don't produce inflation directly. Certain things lead to the production of inflation. So if certain things lead to the production of inflation or an increase in inflation, then those things, the causes, inflation is the effect or the output. The inputs are cost push as well as demand pull. So if you want to change the output, which is high inflation, we need to change the input, which is obviously sorting out cost push factors or sorting out demand pull factors, right? That is essentially what I mean. So lowering inflation. So let's put a heading for this one. This will be the last one. Uh, and then because if I go on with um, lowering inflation, because if I go on with GDP and it's four components, then it will be a long video. Uh, so I'll do this. Let's 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 do this as part one. So this is part one, right? This is part one. Then part two. That is when we'll be going into uh, GDP, right? And of course, like I said, it's um, it's components. The four components of GDP. So when it comes to lowering inflation, we have two we have two methods, right? We have the fiscal. And then we have the monetary, right? So we have the fiscal policy. So fiscal policy, fiscal policy. Uh, let us change color to white. I hope the, I hope this video, guys, is 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 yeah. I don't even hope that it's useful. I'm sure it is useful. <laughs> I'm sure it is useful. Uh, but yeah, we have fiscal policy. Okay, let's do this. Yeah, it's clean. So we have fiscal policy. Then we have monetary policy. Monetary policy. Right. So now we know we know we know the relationship between inflation and unemployment. We know the relationship between supply and demand. We know what causes inflation, most importantly, demand, pull, cost, push. Now, how do we then tame inflation, right? What are the tools that are, that are available for economies to actually try and fight inflation, try and change this output of high inflation by changing the inputs, right, that actually produce this high inflation in the first place? So we have fiscal policy, we have monetary policy. So when it comes to the fiscal policy side of things, so in the fiscal policy, uh, it's essentially uh, we're talking about governments, right? So two things that we can do in the fiscal policy. So in this in this case, I'm referencing to high inflation because remember what I said in the Phillips curve. I said if we inflation or re inflationary gap is the opposite of a recessionary gap, right? So if if I explain how we lower inflation, then when inflation is low, we need to do the opposite in terms of fiscal policy, the opposite in terms of monetary policy. But in this case, OK, let me let me be, be specific, lowering high inflation, right? Lowering high inflation. I think that that is more specific. Right. So then I was still saying on the fiscal side, there's two things we can do right on the fiscal side when it comes to lowering in, in inflation. Right. So increase. Sorry, not lowering, not not increase, decrease. Sorry, decrease government government spending, right? So if we decrease government spending, um, then we decrease government projects, right? Essentially, maybe like a project like cons road construction, right? Because whenever there's road construction, obviously there'll be people that will be employed to do that, right? So it means that more people will be getting a wage and if more people are getting a wage, then more people will do what? More people will be able to buy goods and services, therefore increasing the demand of goods and services. So when it comes to decreased government spending, we are, we are av uh, averting those type of in situations, right? So that's the first thing that we do on the fiscal side or we cut, uh, not cut, sorry, increase taxes, right? So we increase taxes. So when we increase taxes, this results in, so an increase in taxes it decreases um, 
there are decreases disposable income because now if you're a business and you getting tax like you're getting a high tax percentage you no longer have money to expand grow buy machinery if you're a consumer and your tax has been increased you no longer have money to buy goods and services or to afford as many of the goods and services that you're having because remember the primary goal here is to is to lower the money that is chasing the limited supply because on the demand side like we explained more money was chasing limited supply that is why inflation went up that is why prices went up but in this case we are trying to do what we are trying to decrease the money that is chasing supply so if we increase taxes we are decreasing that money that disposable income disposable income and then this will decrease it's a continuation but okay no let me let me actually let me shift it to the side guys because it, it, it looks as if it's two separate things once I'm doing it like this okay so so decreases disposable income therefore decreases uh, consumer spending because now they don't have money to spend so not as much money is chasing the limited supply decreases consumer spending and therefore what that will do this will decrease demand and we just spoke about demand inflation right or demand pull inflation so this is essentially the two things that can be done when we are trying to lower high inflation so this is the government let me put it in brackets government 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 yeah so this is the government and then so on the government side if we're trying to lower high inflation fiscal policy decrease government spending right so that means that not more not not as much money is going into projects and projects obviously will increase employment uh or increase taxes if they increase taxes it decreases disposable income so not as much money is chasing the limited supply anymore this decreases consumer spending so the demand of goods and services will also decrease right so that is essentially it's like a chain reaction right so this is the first way of trying to lower the high inflation right and then on the other hand we have monetary policy so monetary policy it is the central bank central bank like in South Africa, we have the South African Reserve Bank. In America, we ha they have the Federal Reserve. New Zealand, they have the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Australia, Reserve Bank of Australia. Uh, China, People's Bank of China. Japan, the Bank of Japan. Canada, Bank of Canada. Uh, or, or, who did I who did I forget to mention? Switzerland, uh, Swiss National Bank. Um, who else? UK, United Kingdom. They have the Bank of England. Right, so all of the, all those guys, they are what? They are central bankers. And now, a thing to also remember about central bankers is that, okay, how I like to view it, like how I like to view it, essentially central bankers are employees, right? So they are employed to do what? What is the, what is the role of a central bank? To maintain price stability. What is price stability? Inflation. So they need to maintain inflation towards the 2% target. Remember the, the Phillips curve that I explained? That ideal situation of, a, of, a, of an economy? Because I said the Phillips curve is essentially showing us the three different stages of an economy. That ideal stage where we have moderate inflation, the center one, where we have moderate inflation and moderate unemployment. That is what the central bank is trying to achieve. That is the job of the central bank. Essentially, They're trying to achieve that price stability and then of course stable growth as well that is what the central bank is trying to do so when inflation comes in it's now destabilizing what their objectives of trying to maintain price stability right and of course price stability when it comes to inflation it's based on their target whatever their target is then they try and shift things to move inflation closer towards that target if inflation is below the target they push inflation higher or they try and push inflation higher towards the target if it's above the target push inflation lower in this case inflation is above the target because we are trying to lower high inflation so what do they do in this case so in monetary side 
there's a uh, this there's essentially I can say okay let, let's 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 go with it so in this case they increase so in this case they can decrease the money supply right so uh, let's decrease so they decrease the money supply so they decrease the money supply this is the first the first the first way of of, of trying to lower inflation because remember if they decreasing the supply of money that means that banks now do what banks can no longer or no longer have access to as much money so if banks no longer have access to as much money it means that banks can no longer lend money to a lot of people and if banks can no longer lend money to a lot of people businesses can't grow and expand consumers can't borrow money right so if cons or they can but they they won't be they won't be that much supply of money and remember what what remember what what we said when supply goes down prices go higher in this case the supply in terms of money inflation devalues money right or it 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 it, it, it decreases the buying power of money so they when there's an increased supply of money it, it results in inflation that is why it devalues or decreases the purchasing power so if we decrease money supply we are trying to do what we are trying to lower supply and that should push demand or the price of money or the value of money higher right in this case so that is why the central banks will decrease money supply how do they decrease money supply by essentially selling bonds right so they decrease money supply by uh, when it comes to money supply so by increasing in increasing sorry selling bonds selling bonds um, selling bonds that is the first way the second way it is they increase interest rates interest rates and then lastly they can also increase let us say the the reserve ratio right so they increase sorry decrease increase actually increase the reserve ratio so i'm gonna explain each individually right so decrease the money supply like i said they selling bonds right because when they buying bonds they buying bonds from the banks they give the banks the money right then the banks can now loan out the money right if banks loan out the money more businesses can get that money more consumers can get that money then they, of course they spend the money then it grows the whole demand pull side of things when it comes to inflation but when now the central bank is like okay inflation is too high let us lower inflation okay we've dealt with the government let us lower inflation so here's our first thing we need to decrease the supply of money right so we need to start selling those bonds in the open mar open market right so they start selling bonds in the open market it's called open market operations they start selling bonds in the open market and then when they're selling bonds they getting the money right so instead previously they were buying the bonds, so they're giving the money getting the bonds or a certificate as a bond holder now they selling the bonds and they're getting the money so they decreasing the supply of money in circulation because they pulling it out by selling bonds that is the first thing right so they decreasing the money so which means that less money will be chasing the limited supply of goods like we explained in the demand pool then secondly they increase interest rates increasing of interest rates it essentially in a similar way so when they increase interest rates it means what it means that banks also do what banks also increase their interest on loan repayments right so people who had loans are now what are now having to pay high interest if people who had loans are now having to pay higher interest we're focusing more on the demand pull side of inflation right in the in the demand pull side of inflation because businesses are growing people are earning more money so now if interest is going up what does it do it squeezes on the what it squeezes on the disposable income because now the money that they had to spend on whatever they wanted to spend on now they need to divert that money to paying back the higher interest right so for businesses what does that do when interest rates go up it causes the businesses to struggle right because now they need to pay back the money 
pay back the loans at a higher at a higher rate if they pay back the loans at a higher rate what does it do it squeezes profit margins because remember for businesses to to function they need to make a profit so now if it's squeezing profit margins what what do they do they need to start cutting staff right because yeah that's essentially what they do they start laying off people to keep their business afloat and running right and the more it struggles the more people they cut off so that they can free up the profit margins to be able to pay and also survive to to or live to see another day so that is essentially how it impact how high interest rates impact businesses to try and lower the demand pull uh, side of inflation and then when it comes to consumers it's a similar story they now diverting most of their money to paying back higher interest on their loans and then what does that do it means that now the, the disposable income is decreased similar to what we saw with taxes it has a similar uh, impact D in decrease in the disposable income and then it also decrease consumer spending and that will also decrease the demand right because now they don't how will it increase demand if they don't have money yes you see to buy those goods and services right because that money has been cut off so how taxes affect uh, demand it is a similar way in in terms of from the central bank side or monetary policy si policy side how interest rates affect what the demand side of inflation so that is how interest rates help in lowering inflation because the more people get unemployed now going back to the phillips curve if we go back to the phillips curve real quick so now when interest rates are going up we say that businesses are retrenching right so if businesses are retrenching that means that we are now moving to the right side because what is happening to unemployment unemployment is going high and we uh, we expect inflation to do what to go low so we are now shifting from an inflationary gap where inflation was high to a recessionary gap so that is the whole aim of fiscal policy and monetary policy specifically fiscal policy and sorry uh, monetary policy in terms of hiking interest rates they trying to achieve not essentially achieve a reflationary a ref recessionary gap but they're trying to shift things from an inflationary gap hopefully they if they would like they would land on full employment or in the in the moderate inflation scenario but generally it generally the, the scale eventually tilts to the right side where they enter a recessionary gap like we're seeing today uh where that what is what is the date today let's see it's the 28th of of uh, of, of january 2024 like we're seeing today more for recession talks interest rate cuts right why because we are now no longer in an inflationary gap inflation is low is 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 is, is going down which is called disinflation inflation going down now we are headed more in the recessionary gap phase of thing even though unemployment is not that high in some economies like the us but inflation is going down so we are now shifted we've shifted from the inflationary gap now shifting towards the recessionary gap which is why we're getting a lot of talks on the recession so that is what i wanted to highlight there that if on the increasing of interest rates when uh on the monetary policy side of thing when interest rates are going up and businesses are retrenching remember the phillips curve right which means that unemployment is getting lower so inflation should also eventually go lower sorry unemployment is getting higher so inflation should also be going lower right so then the third thing they can also increase the reserve ratio essentially the reserve ratio is the minimum amount of money that a bank should have on hand right so if, for example if the if the if the ratio or reserve ratio was 10 percent that means that if a bank had a million they could uh, loan out 90 percent which is 900,000 and they only had to keep 100,000 in the bank on hand as cash, right? So that is essentially what a reserve ratio is. So now if the reserve ratio goes up for the bank, let's say it moves from 10% to it's all examples to 30% now which means only now now they can only loan out 700k instead of 900k what does that do to the money supply? It decreases the money supply in general, right? Because now banks need to have 300k previously they only needed to have 100k in cash now they need to have 300k in cash and now there's only limited amount of money that they can loan out which means that it will also decrease the supply of money right so that is essentially the framework when it comes to central bank right remember when inflation is low so when inflation is high they decrease money supply by selling bonds increasing interest rates and then they increase the reserve ratio and for us of course what do we do 
we have an understanding that bonds and, and, and interest rates go in the opposite direction. When interest, when the price of bonds goes lower, interest rates go higher, right? And then we also know as we're trading Forex that currencies follow the interest, the interest rate. So whenever a central bank is increasing interest rates or whenever we see high inflation, we know that, okay, one of the ways to lower that inflation is by increasing interest rates. So we start buying into that economy right because we know they they will also sell bonds to try and lower the money supply right and then going back to the phillips curve i said inflationary gap is the opposite of a recessionary gap so now this is what we do in a high inflation environment if i go over the low inflationary environment it will make this video two hours <laughs> so what i'm gonna do in the second part of the video or in part two that is when i'll go over the lower inflationary environment which is essentially the opposite of all of this so in the fiscal side instead of decreased government spending they increase government spending instead of decreasing taxes they increase taxes if taxes go up it increases disposable income which means more more con more consumers and businesses have more money in their hands so that will increase consumer spending also for businesses and then it will increase demand and then if it increases demand then it should push inflation higher remember then on the monetary side instead of decreasing money supply this is in the case where inflation is high sorry inflation is low instead of decreasing money supply they increase money supply instead of decreasing interest instead of increasing interest rate they decrease interest rates because when they decrease interest rates it decreases what it increases disposable income because now interest rate payments on loans has gone lower so now consumers and businesses have that excess disposable income to spend then that also decreases cons that increases consumer spending and then increases demand and then of course banks as well they 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 not as strict in terms of uh lending out money because money is cheap to 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 lend out money so then they lending out money right and also in reserve ratio the central bank will do it will decrease the reserve ratio so if the reserve ratio was 10 percent which means that 100k it's an example guys so if 100 hundred thousand was 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 what was supposed to be held as cash in the bank now it goes to to five percent which means now only 50k then now it gives them 950k that they could loan out if they had a million right so that is essentially how it works this is just the the simplest and the quickest and the easiest way and also the best way for you to understand fundamentals if you understand all of this then you'll be able to understand the the game of fundamentals and it will transform your trading in a way yeah you know it will transform your trading immensely 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 because now you understand what really 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 moves the markets right so like i said so tomorrow not tomorrow actually but in the next video which will probably be tomorrow i will do i will go over gdp and the four com components of gdp the four components being consumers businesses government as well as exports and imports and how that also impacts uh, the actual uh, economy right and then i will also go over like i said in a low inflationary environment yeah but it's just the opposite of all of this so just take this fiscal side flip it over take monetary side flip it over that is how the, that is the response to low inflation right and then of course you tie everything to the phillips curve right so if we try and so what we've done so far we did supply and demand phillips curve inflation as well as okay what causes inflation the two types of inflation and then of course what lower or, or how to kill or lower high inflation right so i hope this video makes sense i know it's a long one if it makes sense to you and you understood it because like i said this is the quickest simplest easiest best way for you to understand and implement fundamentals into your trading because it's one thing to understand but also to implement because now whenever you hearing inflation you know how to respond whenever you're hearing unemployment you know how to respond whenever you're hearing interest rates going up or going down you know how to respond right whenever you're hearing cost push you know how to respond whenever you're hearing that the oil, oil prices are going higher oh oil prices are going higher this is gonna affect the cost push side of inflation so this could possibly feed into inflation so this is the whole framework this is the whole diagram and that is why i wanted to do it step by step with you so that you understand it and you can see the whole complete picture it's mostly complete picture but we still have gdp to go and then 
and then yeah everything will just tie in and fit in together but the biggest component as well on gdp like i said it's consumer spending consumer spending is what keeps the businesses running it's what keeps the businesses alive and also the economy alive right but we'll get into that in the next video when i go over consumer spending right so if you like the video or if you, if you got if you found some value from this video of course like the video subscribe share it with someone and also hit the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever i upload the next video which will be talking about gdp and its components right so i hope this video made sense and you enjoyed it and you learned a ton of of value or you got a ton of value from it cheers